Kyiv Metro, our subway system. It is a convenient and reliable system of public transport that carries millions of passengers every day. Year after year, from early morning to late in the evening. The mother of my friend, an elderly country woman, had never in her life gone down the escalator into the subway. She said, whatever you do, I will not go underground. So I now believe that there are such people who are simply afraid of escalators. We can love it or hate it, rush through the madness to get to work or notice some details with interest. After all, you can admire it or curse it, but you should not remain indifferent. First I go to the subway, I get in the car and go one stop. Then I cross over to the other line and go one more stop. So how often do I ride like that? Every single day of the week. Today every average resident of the big city uses the subway. Someone more often, someone less often. Even having your own vehicle is not a reason to ignore the subway. On the contrary, riding on the subway, you save time and money. The Kyiv Metro has three lines and 52 stations open to passengers. Six of them are above ground, the rest are underground. So just go down the escalator without fear, get into the train, and then you will hear the announcement. Attention, the doors are closing. The next station is... The Arsenalna metro station was among the first five stations opened in the Kyiv metro on November 6, 1960. It is named in honor of the Arsenal plant. Today, according to the official version, it is the deepest subway station in the world. There are similar stations in North Korea, but their exact depth remains unknown. In this station, the distance from the platform to the street level ranges from 100 to 105 meters. By design, it is a typical deep-laid pylon station. There are many such stations in the London underground. That is why they are called English or London type. Arsenalna is the only one of its kind in Ukraine, and there are no more such stations in the entire post-Soviet space. Its main feature is not only the unique depth, but also the short intermediate lobby. This particular station was designed, built and installed in a completely amazing way. The lobby, in the shape of such a bell or a glass cup, as it was called, was assembled on the surface right above the point under which it is located today. Then the construction crew began digging up the soil from under it, and under its own weight it goes right down to the designer's reference mark. And then the soil is just gradually piled above. As the designers and builders called it, this is the so-called bottoming cup method. Nobody in the world did anything like this in those years. For the first time in the practice of building subway systems, the entire underground lobby was lowered to the desired depth almost in its ready form. The edges of this structure were sharp. These knives cut into the ground under their own weight. And for several months, the people of Kyiv observed a huge concrete ring, weighing 3,000 tons, which was slowly lowered to the underground. While it was being constructed from the inside, it looked like this. This is the knife and its edge is actually the bottom of the cup. You can see how sharp it is. And the workers you see standing in the photo had shovels that they used to dig up the soil from under the knife. And in the central part, the excavator that rode here through the lobby extracted the soil. You can easily define where it was located on the surface if you stand with your back to the Arsenalna station. Across the road you will see a small ventilation booth. In fact, the doors lead directly to this booth. The depth of the Arsenal and metro station has nothing to do with the conspiracy theories about the mythical underground bunkers from the Soviet past. It was originally designed this way. Active work began long before the official opening of the subway with the ceremonial cutting of the red ribbon. The results of geological exploration identified powerful water-saturated soils, and just below them were layers of spondylium clay that was suitable for the construction of the station at the depth of almost 100 meters under the ground. 
but then nobody made such long escalators for the metro. The maximum was 65 meters. So it was decided that the descent at Arsenalna would be divided into two parts and an intermediate lobby between the inclined tunnels would be built. Arsenalna, the most beautiful subway station in Kiev. It is the deepest one. Indeed, it takes a long time to go up the escalator. The time passengers spent riding the escalator on the descent or ascent can be easily checked, understanding that the length of the lower escalator at the Arsenalna metro station is 56 meters and the top one is 47 meters. Both of them move quite quickly at a speed of 0.94 meters per second. By the way, in the Kyiv metro systems, experiments with the speed of escalators were conducted until the best option was found. When the movement slowed down, then the capacity of the station decreased and resulted in jams. An acceleration of up to a meter per second became unsafe for passengers. What do escalators look like from the inside? What are they made of? And where is their nucleus located? How reliable is this construction? And why, in fact, do the handrails move slower than the tape itself? Nowadays, while going up or down the escalator, people rarely take their eyes off their smartphone. Or they indifferently look at other passengers on the other side. It is only when the escalator suddenly stops that people suddenly become aware of their dependence on this giant machinery and on the workers who are responsible for their constant functionality. This is an actively assembled and functional escalator, and this is its drive, what we call the heart of an escalator, which consists of a main electric motor that transmits motion to a high-speed gearbox, and behind it is a low-speed gearbox. These are the working brakes of the escalator. You see, this is the way in which the staircase is inspected. We need to shut it down. Some garbage is flying towards us. That is exactly how the escalator moves from the inside. It is impossible today to imagine any subway in the world without them. The Kyiv subway has 122 escalators. Six of them carry passengers here at the Arsenalna metro station. For 58 years, day after day, in this underground bunker, in the engine room, people observe the work of mechanisms. They take millions of passengers from a 100-meter depth to the surface and take them back down. There are probably no such escalators in the entire post-Soviet space. Nowhere but in Ukraine. Fortunately, when these escalators were designed and built, the term of use was not established, unlike the trains. Each car there has a final term of use. These terms are not set for escalators. Is this some kind of pride or something else? It is difficult to say. But fortunately, we can continue to take advantage of them and use them to this day. Each of them has a mileage of more than a million kilometers, and reliability is tested by time. An unplanned stop of at least one of them, especially during rush hour, can lead to a breakdown of the entire metro traffic schedule. This is why safety and reliability, by and large, is all that is required from the escalator. Its main job is to regularly pull the strap. And by the way, about the straps, it is believed that the escalator handrails are especially launched at a different speed. They are lagging behind or are ahead of the steps so that people do not fall asleep while standing on the stairs of the escalator, especially on the longer ones. In fact, it is all about physics. Different escalator nodes have different degrees of wear and tear and nothing more. The subway never ceases to amaze people today. And what about the emotions of those lucky ones who were among the first to get to the opening of the Kyiv subway? I only remember that a door was crushed by the crowd. It was broken and we as children saw for the first time such glass shards that we thought were similar to some expensive diamonds. This is a shard from the opening of the subway. So go down into the subway to see with your own eyes the fabulous underground palaces that the newspapers so often wrote about before launching the metro in the capital of Ukraine. 
thousands of people dreamed about it. Their first stations of the Kyiv subway system, indeed, turned out to be smart and corresponded to the spirit of their time. Marble, granite, luxurious chandeliers, sculptures, grand vestibules, Stalin's empire reigned in the architecture of those years. Arsenalna was no exception. Surprisingly, it still has Soviet symbolism in its design, namely the five-point stars on the ceilings above the platforms. But without these ceiling moldings, the general appearance would surely lose its celebratory atmosphere. Initially, the concept of the station was different. It was supposed to be more luxurious and more empirical. But in 1958, a new architectural competition was being held, and the station was greatly simplified. There are many interesting elements preserved there. Some bronze grids, for example, on the track wall. Some kind of framing of eaves in the intermediate hall, under the arch. It still has a sconce with lamps in the old style. These are all remnants of that neoclassical architectural style. Style. The combination of two light colors, yellowish marble on the walls and a pink granite floor visually expands the space after a five-minute descent to the 100-meter depth of the station. And finally, the translucent grill ceiling lights give even more lightness and airiness. In fact, the station used to look a bit different, perhaps more colorful. There was a beautiful bass relief at the end of the central lobby dedicated to the uprising at the Arsenal plant. It was made of white plexiglass, they say, and it could not survive the decommunization of the 1990s. Just like the bust of Lenin, it will remain only in the photo and sketches of the station of those years. The doors are closing. The next station is 